Hi everybody, my name is Faris Dupro with my colleague Yoshi Onakao from Fujitsu. We will discuss early results from the porting and the tuning of the Vito stencil code generation framework of Fujitsu A64FX processor. The agenda of this presentation is the following. The first part will provide some background on geophysical stencil and introduce the benchmarks used for our study. Out of the box results will also be presented, including comparison with X86 platform. The second part will be presented by Yoshio Nakao san, advanced tuning techniques based on matrix from Fujitsu performance profile of FAP will be discussed with a focus on the impact of prefetching. The production of reliable three-dimensional images of the subsurface remain a major challenge in the oil and gas industry and strongly relies on the efficient exploitation of supercomputers. Communication avoiding approaches have demonstrated their efficiency to reduce the memory traffic. And strategies such as cache blocking in space or in time are now routinely used in production codes. Adapting wave propagation kernels to emerging and accelerated architectures with more and more specialized hardware remain an open topic. As an example, foundational contributions to tune stencil-based computation on GPUs have been revisited to target newly introduced architectures. Indeed, the availability of several reference implementation from the vendors underlined the difficulty of performance tuning and portability. This leads to the design of dedicated frameworks to facilitate the generation of optimized code for geophysical kernels. These DSLX strategies are now mature and DeVito is probably the most advanced framework on this front. DeVito provides an open source compiler for explicit finite differences discretization with the support of various platforms, including GPUs, x86, ARM and Power. Classical optimizations are also included to maximize performance portability. In addition to that, an active community is supporting this framework with industrial partners with state-of-the-art development and validation framework. As discussed previously, the memory burn with demand is one of the key aspects of, geo of geophysical kernels. From this perspective, the Supercomputer Fugaku and the Fujitsu a 64 fig processor have demonstrated a unique combination of computational power and efficiency uh, on various benchmarks, including top 500, HPCG, and HPL AI. The a 64 fix is an out-of-order processor compliant with the ARM V8 architecture. It supports the scalable vector extension, SV, and the SMD width is 512. 128 and 256 are also supported. The A64FX has groups called core memory groups, CMGs, with 30 processor cores and independent L2 cache. The support of 3D stacked memory, HBM2, is one of the key features as the system can deliver up to 840 gigabytes per second. Overall, for real-world PDA-based problems, such as geophysical stencil with arithmetic intensity between one and four, the A64FX is a very well-balanced architecture with a ratio close to two. This slide recap the setup for our experiments. We consider the Vito version 4.2.3 in the rest of this presentation. This release requires to manually specify ARCH64 platforms, but since the latest released, the support of ARM-based platform is fully transparent. As a baseline, we use the fourth order acoustic stencil that is very well known in the scientific community with the availability of reference results. The 12 other acoustic and TTI kernels are probably more representative of industrial applications and correspond to different arithmetic intensity. In the first case, the kernel is highly memory bound 
The TTI kernel involves much more floating point operation per variables and tend to be more compute bound. In terms of setup, all the Python dependency required by DeVito have been made available on the AFIX 1000 system. We have compared the use of the Python version from the system and packaging, packages recompiled with the Fujitsu compiler. In the last case, all the dependencies such as NumPy and MPI for Py have also been recompiled. The impact on the elapsed time is not significant and is below 3% in our case. Due to the organization of the A64FX with four NUMA regions, the best strategy is to consider hybrid programming model with on MPI process per CMG and 12 OpenMP threads. Results from the execution of these three benchmarks are presented here. Comparison with AWS instances running MD ROM and Intel Cascade Lake platform with GCC 10.2 are presented. For this plot, we consider vanilla version of the DeVito platform without modification or optimization. In terms of scaling, all benchmarks exhibit excellent speed up on one CFG with a maximum of 12.1 for the 12 order TTI flavor. On four CMGs, the best result is for the TTI stencil with a speed up of 35.7. Elapsed times have been normalized with respect to the result obtained on the A64 FX. We can observe 3.18 speed up for the most memory bound stencil, the fourth order in comparison with Intel Cascade Lake and 2.7 in comparison with AMD ROM. This is clearly the impact of the superior memory bandwidth offered on the A64 FX with the support of the HBM2. For benchmarks with higher operational intensity, the A64 FX can deliver very competitive results. This is on par with reference numbers from the DeVito Matrix project that includes performance numbers from execution on Intellect Skylink architecture. The 12 order TTI example with an operational intensity of three or 4.3 tend to be less compute bound. In this case, x86 platforms exhibit very good performance numbers. For these complex kernels, more tuning is required to improve out of the box results. Some of these techniques will be introduced by Yoshi Onakao in the second part of this presentation. Hello, everybody. I'm Yoshio Nakao from Fujitsu. I'll make a presentation of the second part. As Fabrice reported, A64FX shows a good performance for a simple model. However, the performance for more complex models are not as good as that for the simpler. In this part, we'll report the results of trials to enhance the performance on A64FX. Objectives of this part are first to identify different CPU behaviors that could explain the performance difference among these models. Second, to examine a possible way of tuning that controls the behavior of the hardware prefetching function of A64FX. The remainder of this presentation will be organized as shown in the agenda list. This slide describes the summary of the digital calculation. It uses 3D array and through blocking. The blocking parameters are automatically tuned by the DeVito framework. The figures at the bottom center demonstrate the data access order. As it shows, each thread calculates a block of data assigned by OpenMP. Calculation along with the D direction is vectorized by the compiler. The box at the bottom right shows the should code of the innermost loop. The number of input vectors increases according to the space order. Note that the locations of the data scatter widely. That is, 
The stride of the data for X and X plus 1 is about 1 megabyte, which is larger than the size of L1 cache address space. Accordingly, it is difficult for L1 cache to handle the successive access of data required for a set of vectors corresponding to consecutive indices in X dimension. This slide shows example of booking parameter selected for the fifth order acoustic model. The debate auto tuning evaluates possible combination of parameters for X and Y dimension by five time step calculation trials and select the best one. As shown in the graph below, smaller parameters tend to achieve better performance, which should relate that load imbalance among threads are likely to occur for a large blocking size. Performance difference shown in the light graph suggests that about 10% improvement of performance concerning L1 cache usage could be expected for the debate auto-tuning. Now we are ready to analyze the difference of CPU behavior that could explain the performance difference among the three models. The table below shows the profile data obtained for the three models. The major difference is in the memory input values. The peak ratio of the fourth order model is 60%, while those of the 12th order models are less than 40%. The main cause suggested by the second table is the behavior of prefetching. For the fourth order model, the higher prefetching function works well so that 80% or more of required data were cached before the calculation starts. On the other hand, hardware prefetching covers only 30% or less for the 12th order models. This is because too many data streams required to compose calculation vectors in 12th order calculation for the hardware to prefetch. For example, as shown in the hotspot codes, the most cost cost streaming calculation requires 37 data streams to compose input vectors from the matrix U, while the hardware prefetching resources can handle up to 16 streams. The compiler then inserted 26 prefetch instructions for this group. Considering the data blocking, the hardware function may prefetch not only necessary data but also unnecessary ones, such as those at the outside of the blocked area, which might degrade the performance. We then conduct a trial to examine the effect of parameter tuning of the hardware prefetching function. This slide shows the result of parameter study on hardware prefetching function for draft order cost model. For each of L1 and L2 cache, there is a parameter called prefetch distance that controls how far cache lines should be prefetched by the hardware function. The result shown in the graph suggests that the parameter for L1 cache is the main factor, and 5% or more improvement of performance could be obtained with an appropriate settings for L1 cache. In other words, for L1 cache, one line prefetching might be enough for this case, and prefetching too many cache lines degrade the performance, probably by increasing cache conflict. This proposition is also supported by the profile data in the next slide. The profile data below suggests that suppressing unnecessary hardware prefetching improves usability of cache data. For example, L1D miss demand rate in the first table indicates that by using an appropriate prefetch distance, about 85% of required data could be cached before the calculation starts. With the best parameters, as shown in the second table, the total extension time reduced 5%. 
since the 5% improvement concerning cash usage is about a half of the estimated improvement by blocking data, prefetch tuning might be effective as well as auto tuning blocking data. Now, I'll conclude our presentation. Early results demonstrate the effectiveness of the A64 FX for seismic workloads and the maturity of the Fujitsu software stack. Maximum out-of-the-box speedup is 2.7 times compared with the dual socket to difference X86 plateau. And the beat auto-tuning is effective, especially for optimizing L1 cache usage. The operational intensity significantly influences the performance, and higher order benchmarks suggest that prefetch tuning might be effective as well as optimizing data blocking. Thank you for listening. We appreciate the Demiro team for their kind support.